Hey, I'm Dylan. What are you afraid of? We're all afraid of something to some degree or another. We think of fear almost as a normal daily thing in our world today. But what we don't often consider is that fear reveals areas of life where we're not experiencing the love of God through faith. 1 John 4.18 puts it this way, Such love has no fear, because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment, and this shows that we have not fully experienced His perfect love. With that in mind, we need to take fear seriously, because fear is an indicator that we have not fully experienced His perfect love. God is serious about us not living in fear. In the Bible, the phrase, don't be afraid, is used a lot. Jesus' first words after His resurrection were, don't be afraid. The first words at the announcement of Jesus' birth were, don't be afraid. We can know with confidence that God does not want us to live in fear. It's just not from Him. 2 Timothy 1.7 shows us that fear is not from God. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. See, fear will rob us of power, love, and self-discipline. You know in your heart when something is keeping you from experiencing the fullness of God, His peace and His love. There is a difference between fear and wisdom or common sense. Be careful with that, because while we don't want to live in fear, it's good to be cautious and use wisdom. Like when you approach a place that's not safe, maybe like a high cliff, you still want to be cautious. But fear in our heart keeps God at an arm's length away from us. So we have to ask if in our heart, if something is keeping us from experiencing the fullness of God. This can help us determine whether it is fear or just a common sense or wisdom issue. This is not about rules and regulations. Let's look at our memory verse for the series. You must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. It's Mark 12, 30. How can we love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength if we're living in constant fear? Is fear keeping you from loving God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength? The good news is, as I said at the start of this discussion, we are all in this together. We all have fears to some degree or another. The question is though, what are we going to do with them? Because fear is an opportunity for faith. Let's say that together. Fear is an opportunity for faith. One of the most important things you can do for those you love is to lead the way out of fear. Pass on to those you love a life and a heart of courage and faith. With faith and courage, the future is limitless for living God's plan and purpose. Fear instead shows you and speaks to you about your limitations. Don't allow your fear to define the boundaries of your life. Let's take a compass for this example, for today's visual. Draw out a compass as best as you can on your talk notes or on a piece of paper. Being lost can bring the feeling of fear. Think back to when you were a little kid and you lost a parent as you were walking through the grocery store. Do you remember feeling fear in that moment? Or you're on a nature hike and you soon realize you aren't sure where exactly you started or where the trail is. We often can feel overall lost as we try to figure out where we fit in. Being lost can bring a lot of fear. We could use a compass to find our direction, but the feeling of being lost brings on the feeling of panic. And we just stand there and spin trying to figure out where the compass is even going to point us. Some of you may have heard the saying, God is the one true north. Today, as we talk about fear, we can use the image of the compass as a visual to turn fear into faith. We can let God direct the path we're on and reject fear. Take a moment to look at the compass you drew. Where do you feel lost or afraid right now in life? Write it below your compass.
I want you to have a life which is free from fear and ultimately live in faith in areas where you've been most afraid. You can be empowered by Jesus. Fear reveals where we're not trusting God. Faith stands waiting at the opportunities of fear. Fear is an opportunity for faith. Let's say it again together. Fear is an opportunity for faith. So how do you make that shift from fear to faith? Take your compass and let's get ready to write some directions on there. God is the one true north. And there are three other ways you can make that shift from fear to faith. Number one, respond to Jesus' commands with obedience. God is with you and he will protect you. Listen to his voice and obey his commands. In Matthew 14, Jesus' disciples were out on a boat and a storm began to throw their boat around. They were scared. Being on a boat in the middle of a storm is scary. Now imagine back with the disciples. It was just a big wooden boat. It would not be a fun experience to say the least. It makes sense that they were afraid and full of fear, but Jesus wants to show them it's okay. Jesus spoke to them at once and said, don't be afraid. He said, take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come to you, walking on the water. It's out of Matthew 14, 27 through 28. See, fear is a red flag. It shows the areas that we should be focusing on so we can grow in our faith. Jesus calls back to Peter and tells him to walk out on the water and come to him. And Peter obeys Jesus' command. He steps out of the boat in faith and he walks on the water towards Jesus. Peter was doing awesome. He was walking on water. Only Jesus and Peter did that. But then things took a bad turn because Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and it began to be filled with fear. But remember, fear is an opportunity for faith. Say it again with me. Fear is an opportunity for faith. So how do you make that shift from fear to faith? Well, number one, respond to Jesus' commands with obedience. And number two, maintain eye contact with Jesus. Fear for Peter came when he took his eyes off of Jesus. He didn't understand that if he would just keep his eyes on Jesus, he would continue to walk on water. We pick up the story in Matthew 14, 30. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and he began to sink. Peter is doing an amazing thing. He really walked on water, this is true. He saw Jesus, he let go of the fear in his heart and stepped out in faith towards Jesus walking on water. But his human nature takes over, fear overcomes his mind and his heart, and he begins to slip away and sink. God wants to protect and comfort us in those places where we experience fear. We can drown in fear, but with faith, we can walk on water. If Peter would have continued to look at Jesus, fear would not have been a problem. Have you ever been somewhere really high up? Like really high? You're doing great and not really afraid of the height because you're not so focused on what's in front of you. Then someone says, don't look down. All of a sudden, what do you do? You look down, the opposite of what they said to do. And you freeze full of fear because you just now realize what's below you. That's what happened to Peter. He could have kept going if he just looked to Jesus. We can experience this fear in our lives in so many ways. So what are the things that terrify you? And are you maintaining eye contact with Jesus to eliminate the fear? Or are you looking down and living in the fear, sinking in the water as Jesus is waiting? Remember, fear is an opportunity for faith. Say that with me again. Fear is an opportunity for faith. How do you make that shift from fear to faith? We talked about number one, respond to Jesus' commands with obedience. Number two, maintain eye contact with Jesus. And number three, call out to Jesus and worship him. Why do we fear? We have an amazing God who is there with us, reaching out his hand. Yet we fear. He tells us, do not be afraid for I am with you. 
be strong and courageous. I am with you wherever you go. Yet our human nature makes us fearful of things. Peter was afraid of the storm around him once again. He's sinking in the water and he calls out to Jesus, save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? That's Matthew 14, 30, B through one. I love how Jesus is so blunt here. He just looks at Peter, who only moments before was walking on water. And he says, why did you doubt me? Jesus just proved to Peter that he could have faith and walk with him. Yet Peter was overcome with fear. And we do this in our lives. We know Jesus is there. He's reaching out his hand saying, I've got you, have faith. And yet we look down, we see the height and we freeze. We sink into the fear. But Jesus can pull you out of the fear if we can just have faith in him. He can pull you out of fear so that you can live in his good, pleasing, and perfect plan for your life. And when you allow him to pull you out of that fear, worship him. This is what the disciples did when Jesus got back onto the boat. When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshiped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. It's Matthew 14, 32 through 33. Fear is the polar opposite of faith. The two cannot dwell in the same place. Fear is irrational when it comes to God's kingdom. Call out to Jesus when you are fearful and worship him for the amazing things he's done in your life. Fear is an opportunity for faith. Say it with me again. Fear is an opportunity for faith. Again, we all have fears that not only affect ourselves, but those around us. Fear can be passed on to those around us. It's crippling sometimes. We need to allow God to break the chains of fear that are holding us back. Now is the time to work on using the compass pointing to the one true north. Use it as a reminder during one of those moments. Respond to Jesus' commands with obedience. Maintain eye contact with Jesus and call out to Jesus and worship him. Taking that opportunity for faith is acknowledging that we do live in danger of being tossed back and forth like Peter. But we are going to avoid a shipwreck by fixing our eyes on Jesus. Grab your compass and follow the one true north. I challenge you to memorize 2 Timothy 1.7 this week and make it a daily prayer. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Go back to that area you first thought of when I started speaking of fear. What would it look like to live in faith and freedom? Write it down on your compass. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for reaching out to us and giving us opportunities to have faith. Help us to keep our eyes on you so that we don't drown in our fears. Help us to continue to point to the one true north. Thank you for continually pulling us out of fear and giving us your power, love, and self-discipline. And if you haven't made Jesus the leader of your life, you can do that with me right now. Just say this prayer with me. Dear God, I recognize that you are who you say you are. I know that you can give me your power, your love, and self-discipline to overcome the fears in my life. I know I've done wrong, and I don't want to sin anymore. I want to make you the leader of my life. Amen.